Good morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines. This is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Father, bless this word. Lord, speak this word. Lord, help us, guide us, and teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, this message is going to be called, They Just Want Us to Fight. They, quote fingers, just want us to fight. They could mean many things. Whatever they identify themselves with. <laughs> But they could be politicians, they could be demons, they could be just people, just everyday people. They just want us to fight. A little disclaimer here, off topic. Um, you're only going to find all of our messages on our YouTube. You're only going to find all of our messages on YouTube, okay? And so... Uh, sometimes I do two screens. I have my phone here and then I do another phone because we have an extra phone, no service, uh, that I record and then I upload that to the YouTube. And so right now, this one's just my phone that I'm going to upload to the YouTube. You're going to find all of our messages on YouTube. We want people to go to the YouTube channel. Long story short, uh, for many other reasons, um, that's where you're going to find the meat. That's where you're going to find everything. You're not going to see everything on Facebook. All right. And so we just want to lead everybody to the YouTube because then we're actually able to see who's actually taking us seriously, who's actually watching and so forth. Um, that's what we take more serious than the Facebook because some people just scroll through, look at a few seconds and then they move on. Right. Whereas the YouTube is actually like legit people, legit accounts because YouTube also has this thing where they clean out accounts that are fake and they do a really good job at that they even deleted us at one point we were like what are you doing and we had to type we had to send a letter and they're like oh we're sorry we had to do that like three times <laughs> because there's so many people creating all these false youtubes right and so just to subscribe to themselves which is bull crap so uh we take the youtube channel seriously so just go on the youtube you'll find every sermon rarely if ever um, there's offhanded sermons that just go straight to the Facebook because the Lord's like, just get that out there. And I'm like, no, YouTube. He's like, no. Or sometimes I'm just being a little lazy, to be honest. And I'm like, yeah. Right. But most all the good, great, amazing sermons you'll find on YouTube. All right. And our series, we're starting an entire like different kind of series and we're doing short messages too. So you don't have to sit there and listen to an hour or half an hour. You can just listen to five minutes. All right. With that being said, the sermon series uh, since they're going to be short, please watch them in order. Please, please, please. Because they all correlate to one another. All right. Without further ado, let's get to our message. Again, this message is called, They Just Want Us to Fight. They being demons, Satan. They being the world, the politicians. They being everyday people who want to be in power. Uh, that's also a narcissistic spirit. A narcissistic spirit just likes when people are fighting each other. Because it keeps them out of the uh it keeps them in control and it keeps them looking good and it's very manipulative and so forth um and it makes people look at them in a not realistic way narcissistic people including demons and satan of course and just people in power they just want us to fight it keeps them in power so if you notice anybody who's like that they could just be a, someone who lives in a town right I've seen it, man. I've seen it in workplaces. I've seen it with people who just in church is they like people fighting each other because it makes them look good and it keeps them in control. It's sad. And so when you figure that out, it takes a while, to be honest. It takes to me, it took me diligently seeking the Lord for him to unfold and unravel and shed these things from me in order to see them to what's going on in the world. And, and I've seen it in my house. It's happened in my household a lot. <clears throat> Once you understand that the way the flesh, the devil, the world works is when they just want to create arguments. They don't care who wins the election, for example. They don't care. That's how smart these demonic forces, these demons, these Satan is. He wants us to fight over literally anything, fight, argue over anything. And any teacher who's teaching you that, I don't want to say as a false teacher, 
I'm not saying you can't take a stand for something, but I'm saying you don't have to fight and you don't have to argue. You can politely disagree or you can just nod your head and go, okay, I hear you. And your heart be like, I disagree with you, but I'm not going to fight over that, right? I'm not going to argue over that. I'm not going to have to prove my point. The moment that you have to prove your point, you lost. If someone's trying to prove something to you, they're in their pride. If you're trying to prove something to people, you're in your pride. Do you hear what I'm saying? You've already lost. You've already lost yourself in control, <laughs> right? Self-control. You've already lost that other person. Uh, they, If they're trying to do the same to you, they've already lost. It's like it's a lose-lose situation. I always say to my wife, if you win, I lose. If I say, well, if you win, yeah, I lose. But if you win, you lose. If I win, I lose. If anyone wins, if there's a winner, then there must be a loser, right? And so that's not what Christ came to do. Christ came to unite us all with all of our differences and our preferences, right? But we like to fight over our preferences. We like to fight about anything. I've noticed in my household with raising kids, I was going to say specifically females. No, <laughs> no, I, I just, it's our nature is they're always fighting. I'm like, why are you always fighting? Stop it. Stop fighting. Right. And it bothers me. And so when the other one's like, oh, he, sh she did this and da, 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 da. And I'm like, both of you are wrong. Both of you are wrong. Right. And sometimes when I do put one in time out and the other one gets to watch, she's like, yeah, I won. And I'm like, you're wrong too. Because you think there's a loser. Right? When Christ came in the world, he lost for us so we can all become winners. That's the heart of Christ. And that needs to be the heart of the church. That needs to be the heart of all of us. That I'm willing to lose. I'm willing to take the blame so to reconcile everybody. God's willing to take the blame. Jesus was willing to take the blame to reconcile us. That we might feel loved. And so it's just pride, right? And so many Christians I've noticed, they, it's, we fall for the trap, man. It's, we fall for this trap. Like there needs to be a winner. Like what part of good news don't we understand? <laughs> like the good news is not just for us. The good news is for others. You hear what I'm saying? And I think we've done a poor job in telling people the good news because we don't go to them and be like, hey, man, like God loves you, man. Like some of them do. Right. And God wants to forgive you of your sin. Like you can say hard things nicely. Right. And I think I'm not saying you, you need to avoid telling them that they're a sinner, telling them they need to repent. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is you could tell them it nicely. Right. You're like, hey, man, like we're all sinners. You know, Jesus forgiven my sin. People will listen to a testimony, but they won't listen to if you tell them they're a sinner, right? Usually that's the case. Man, God, I've done this and this in my life, man. I've screwed up and do it politely. And, you know, but Jesus forgave me, man. He can forgive you. I don't know what you struggle with. You know, I, 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 uh, we all struggle and Jesus wants to forgive you and show you grace. And they see that grace that's in you that draws them to want this Jesus, right? But what I've seen and what we, I hate to say, we'll probably always encounter is people yelling and screaming. I did that. I'm not going to lie. Right? I'm trying to yell and scream people into the kingdom. <laughs> Sometimes, sad to say, that works. Most of the times it doesn't because it makes them worse. <laughs> makes them twice as much as a Pharisee as you. Right? And so the kindness of God draws people to Christ. Not the other stuff. Hurry up. And so with that being said, I've noticed, I was like, they just want us to fight each other. I was, we we're talking about the election coming up in a few weeks. And we were looking at it, we we're like, if the left wins, the right side's going to be pissed off. They're going to lash out, not just at those folks, but at their agitation is going to periferate in their families and their lives and their workplaces. And that's going to, ripple into those people's lives, into their communities, into their homes and families. It doesn't matter if the left right wins or the right wins, someone's going to be angry. Someone's going to be frustrated. And as long as anyone's angry and anyone's frustrated about anything, we all lose, right? And, and, and when you catch on to it, that's why they, at least I feel, I could be wrong, 
they, they go, we're going to let this guy win or a girl or whoever. And then next year, four years, we're going to let this person win. And then it's just going to create this rocking the boat, man. In my house, like I said, when one wins, they rock the boat, look down on the other child, right? In their pride. And then I got to humble this child. And then the other one becomes prideful. And it's like, and I'm trying to teach them, stop rocking the boat. Stop thinking there's a winner and there is a loser, right? I'm not saying that we can't have fun. We can't play sports. We can't play board games and there could be a winner and loser. Yeah, obviously. But even in that, I've seen people argue about that afterwards, right? And create an argument out of that. And I'm like, what? It's just a game. Think about it. Jesus died, became sin so we could win. Jesus became sin so we could win. And that needs to be our heart, right? That the, the, the Bible says that the church will take persecution, but that's in order to draw people to Christ. And we need to be forgiving and we need to be repenting. We need to not seek revenge. That's why it says turn the other cheek, right? Don't return evil with evil. I've seen Christians, I've done it, returning evil with evil. And it just never gets anywhere. Trying to have the last word, trying to say the last doctrine and, and one-upping each other in doctrine. It's just like, this is not Jesus. If you disagree with someone, that's okay. Just disagree and move on with your life. Be like, oh. And most of the time, you don't need to say anything. Be like, I don't need to say anything. We could be having fun. You got to watch this movie called... Um, Ben-Hur. It's the, the last version of Ben-Hur that came out. Long story short. And out of the... In the movie, they're, they're, they got along at first. So the two brothers, they got along. And then in the movie, they started to fight. They started to hate each other because of... One was a Roman and the other one was a Jew. Right? They grew up together and they got along. But then they, the world, the devil, the flesh, whatever, their pride, created, made them enemies... And then they're both like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. So imagine at first they're like, I love you, bro. I love you. It's cool. I love you, man. They were cool. They got along and everything. One was a Jew. One was a, a Roman. They grew up together. They loved each other and everything was great. They did everything together. And then they got to the point where one became, well, both of them became prideful about their heritage and about one's better i'm better than you and all this stuff and then this most of the movie they're fighting each other and as they're fighting each other guess what the nations are fighting each other because the jews versus the romans and all this stuff and in the middle of the movie jesus shows up right he shows up a little bit at a time he's like love everybody love everybody right and they don't get it and they're still fighting each other and then one brother defeats the other one in a horse race and all this stuff and he's like yeah i did it right and then he realizes that he's like, that's my brother. Why am I fighting him? Because he experiences Jesus dying on the cross. At first, he's like, I should feel better about myself. And then he ends up at the cross seeing Jesus die. And he's like, Jesus is like, love each other. Love each other. Forgive each other. And the dude realizes. And then he goes to his brother. And his other brother's like, I'm still going to kill you when I get off this wheelchair. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> or the stretcher, right? I'm going to murder you. And the brother's like, Jesus forgave me. I forgive you. And he's like, he grabs his knife and he's about to look like he's going to stab him. And he gives him a hug and everything's good. And after that, the movie continues towards the end. And they're all getting along like they were kids again. And then this Roman dude shows up like, we're going to fight the war. We're going to destroy these people. And he's with his Jewish brother. And he's like, whatever, man. Do what you got to do. And they move on and the sun sets and everyone's happy. The end. <laughs> That's the cross. <laughs> right? That's the cross. Right there. That God reconciled us to himself. That we might reconcile one another. Right? And in the end, we're all forgiven. And in the end, we're all healed. And in the end, we don't hate each other. We don't want to murder each other. So when I look at the world, I see all this division doesn't matter what it is romans versus the jews the talls versus the shorts the blacks versus the whites the blues versus the reds the orange versus the pinks the the the, 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 the women versus the men all these arguments and i'm like that's the kingdom of the devil to fight 
to fight, to have the last word. You hear what I'm saying? The Calvinists versus the Armenianists or whatever, like it's just this denomination versus that denomination. That's the devil's kingdom. When you are fighting, you have lost. You've already lost your brother. You've already lost yourself. You're blind, Jesus said. Jesus laid down his life, never had pride. He laid it down that he might become our sin. Once you really start thinking about why people are arguing about everything, and in the end, Jesus is like, it's all forgiven. It's all washed away. Then you're like, what? Then what it looks like is a pool party, right? A pool party where people are barbecuing. There's a pool, right? Some people are swimming, genuinely, and other people are just having fun. That's what church is, right? Walking in the spirit is, right? Everyone's having fun. Everyone's in this pool party in eternity to eternity to eternity. Everything's good and Gucci. And then there's this group of people, right? Who are drowning in the pool, drowning themselves in their pride. Naturally, your body wants to go up to get air because we have air in our lungs, in our body, naturally. But we have to swim we have to swim down or we have to hold ourselves down under the water so, so we don't go naturally up. Your spirit, your heart, your conscience naturally wants to go up to get oxygen, <laughs> right? Naturally wants to heal, naturally wants to go to God. Be reconciled to the Father, naturally. That's what we wanna do. That's what our spirit and soul wants to do. But our pride would rather drown and die than go to the surface and be healed and go with everybody else and party and have fun and whatever. And that's how I see the world now is that people would rather drown in their pride than be wrong and forgive and be healed and join everybody in heaven. Isn't that crazy? Because of, and the devil does this. He doesn't just do this in the world. He do, it, it, It's not just the him, it's our pride. He does it in the church. And I see it. And it's sad. And, and it reminds me of that quote of scripture where it says, uh, or is it scripture? It's a saying. God doesn't put people in hell. People choose hell. That means they're holding on to something in this world, whether their identity they built in this world, their career, something in this world. You've noticed in the garden, right? That they were in perfect harmony with God. And then the devil came and tempted them by pointing them, not, pointing them away from God. And he's like, there's something in that water. God's hiding something in that water. And you gotta, and you gotta go dig for it. You gotta look for it, right? So they went from bliss and harmony and joy when they were living in full surrenderance to now striving and working for something they already had. The devil's a liar. Why are you striving for something you already have? Why are you trying to become something you already are? <laughs> you will be like God. God already said you were like him. And he made them male and female, like his, according to his likeness. If you eat of this fruit, you'll become like him, the Satan says. I'm already like him. <laughs> That's like trying to prove to you guys that I'm black. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Or if you're, if you're whatever nationality you are, that's trying to prove to people what you already are. Like, why are you trying to prove to people what you already are? That's how he tempts us. And that's called pride. Right? That's called unbelief. When you're trying to prove what you already are. The Lord's like, why are you trying to prove people you're a pastor? I already called you it. Really? <laughs> You've already done it for me. Then why am I tempted to try to do something I already am? Because you're not believing what I already said. 
Jesus said it was finished. Why don't I feel like it's not? Why do I feel like it's not finished? It's pride. Why do I feel like I got to do something? It's pride. Right? It means our hearts are still hard. And we need the gospel to penetrate through that stone. I don't need to do something. I need something done. <laughs> right? Someone to do something in me to penetrate this. Right? This stony heart. Does that make sense? They just want us to fight each other. They want us to do something about it. You don't need to do something about it. It's already done. Well, why don't I believe? Because my heart is hard. I need God, I need your spirit to penetrate this stony heart and give me a heart of flesh to believe it's already done, right? That's the gospel. That's why Jesus says, go into the world and preach the gospel. You know what the gospel does? It starts chiseling away at that hardened heart, that unbelieving heart that the devil did by making us strive after something we already have and we already are. When you're trying to strive after something you already have and already are, it makes your heart calloused. It makes your heart hard. So the gospel, what it does is it comes in there and it goes chisel, 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 break, crack. And here's, that's what Moses, speak to the rock. He told him to speak to the rock. Moses' heart was hard. He struck it. Ah! <laughs> right? We're striving after something that we already have and we already are. That's works. You don't have to do anything. Christ did everything. So I need Christ to penetrate me. You hear what I'm saying? You need Christ to penetrate your hardened heart. Our hardened heart. You ever notice the devil called them to do something? God said, don't do anything. Don't touch this fruit. The devil said, do something. You ever notice in the temptation in the garden? I mean, the temptation in the wilderness with Jesus. It was a garden. Now it's a wilderness, right? You ever noticed? The devil came to Jesus and he says, prove yourself. Prove you are the son of God. And Jesus is like, no, I don't need to prove anything to you. <laughs> right? Look at ourselves. How much, what, are, we, are we striving to be Christians? Like, like, think of that concept for a second. If you want God's acceptance, you have to do X, Y, and Z. You have to, you have to do something. What about the gospel that tells us that Jesus already did something? And so we have these churches going around being like, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And it's just like, and then you have the churches that are living in God's grace and his gospel. And they're just like, Jesus already did everything. And when they do something, they're doing it in his strength and spirit. And people are like, thank you. And you're like, for what? <laughs> what did I do? You did this. I'm like, I didn't do anything. I just walked it over there and did that. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Right? Or you're just like, praise God. My wife, uh, there's a guy in the store. I had my Jesus Superman shirt on. <laughs> and he was like, awesome shirt. I was like, thanks. That glory went straight to God. Hey, Amen. My wife's like, it was just amazing how you just were able to just take that. Usually I have to explain myself what store I got that from and all that stuff. I'm like, I was, I was ready to answer like, yeah, it's our church. And, but I was like, ah, I don't need to say anything. Right? I didn't even think about it. You don't have to think about being a Christian. If you do, you fell for the trap. And the moment you do, then what we do is we start looking down on people who aren't doing 
because we're doing and they're not doing, right? Or we feel, we, you ever notice that in your Christianity, you feel better when you do and you feel like crap when you don't do anything? That's religion. That's our sinful nature. That's the devil's poopy trap, right? And so what it means to follow the spirit of God is it means to go, when it says we are becoming sanctified through the spirit of God, that means the spirit of God says, sit down and enjoy yourself. And we sit down and we enjoy ourselves. I mean, it's the spirit of God says, go do this. And we go and do this. We don't do anything outside of what the spirit tells us to do. And if we do, it's religious. And if we do, we start bu bu boasting in ourselves, looking down on others or feeling crappy. When, right? And looking too highly on others. So let's bring it all the way back in. They just want us to fight. For what? Jesus already did the fighting. Jesus has already won on the cross. Why do I have to do something? The only thing Jesus is calling me to do is to follow him in the standing up and sitting down and moving here and doing that. Aside from that, what does that have to do with me? What does, does he want me to do that? If he wants me to go do that, I'll do that. Aside from that, I don't need to do anything. He's already done everything. And when he does call me to do stuff, I'm not doing that in my own strength and power. I'm doing it in his strength and his grace and his mercies and his power. So this fight, I need to fight, I need to become, is the trap. You need to do something about this. No, I don't. I just need to obey him. When he tells me to get up, I get up. When he tells me to sit, I sit. When he tells me to go there or do this, I'll do that. That's it. And that's not striving. And when you're not striving, you're not fighting. You're not fighting anyone. When you're following the spirit of God, you're not, you're not in conflict with anybody. I love that about the spirit of God. I love that about following him. I'm not in conflict with anybody because I don't have anything to prove. Right? You ever notice people who are always in conflict with people? I used to be. <laughs> they have something to prove. I got to prove to you. I got to prove to them. I got to prove. I got to stand up for my Christian rights and values. I got to be... <laughs> You know what they call that? Idolatry. That's idolatry. I have to stand up for my Christian morality. I have to do this and that. Blah, 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 blah. Jesus said it was finished. Jesus says the Spirit is doing the work in you. So, if Jesus said it's finished, then where's the striving? There isn't any striving. There isn't any working because he's doing the works through you. Right? But it's our pride that thinks that we can do life or do Christianity or do anything without him. Jesus says you could do nothing without me. And so what the devil is trying to do is he tempts Jesus in the wilderness. He's trying to get him to disobey. When we're in the spirit of God, when we're walking with him, obeying him, we are in this constant state of rest. Do you hear what I'm saying? When we're lined up with his will, lined up with his grace and his mercy and his identity, doing what he wants, we are in a constant state of rest. Even when we're doing, we're still at rest. Why? Because it's his power, it's his wisdom, it's his glory that's doing it through us. Who's lifting up this cup? Is the cup lifting itself in its own power and wisdom? Or am I lifting the cup up and drinking it? Does the cup have to think, I need to do this to get drunk from? No, I do the lifting. And that's the same thing God says, you are a vessel, I am the God. You cannot mold yourself. You cannot lift yourself. You could do nothing for yourself unless I lift you and do it through you. I'm the one who fills you up. I'm the one who empties you. I'm the one who puts you here, puts you there, and moves you here and moves you there. Sam, I am, I am, I said. 
<laughs> grow no green eggs in ham. In my head. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? But I've watched not just worldly people, but Christians doing this and doing this. We're do we are doing this Christian thing on our own. We're forgiving our own sins. We're walking over here and touching this and doing these things. And it's all man-made, which is pride. What does that have to do? Sorry. What does that have to do with fighting? As long as you're not yielded to the Father, you're not a vessel for the Spirit of God, you're constantly fighting. And Jesus said it this way, you will know them by their actions, by their fruits. If they're constantly fighting about Scripture, they're, that's in the flesh. If they're constantly fighting anyone, they're in the flesh. And the Pharisees were very confrontational. Every time, you ever notice when Jesus was just hanging out with his disciples, when Jesus was just hanging out with people, he was, he was gracious and loving and peaceful and all this stuff. As the Apostle Paul says, do your best to live a quiet life and, and also to be at peace with all men. That's the spirit of God. When you're at peace with all men, but when you're walking in the flesh, you're not at peace in and amongst yourself. You're not at peace with anybody. You're at war with everybody. Those, those Christians that stormed the Capitol were not doing that in the spirit of God. I guarantee you that. They're in their own flesh. Right? If they have the spirit of God in them, they shouldn't have been there. If they have the spirit of God in them, they're not yielding to him. <laughs> so, so. What's going to happen in November? I have no idea, but I know people aren't going to be happy. And I know by their fruits, you'll recognize them. <laughs> by their actions. God is calling us to peace. That might be hard for a lot of you Christians to believe, but God is calling us to peace, right? That, that the world will be fighting one another, bickering, arguing, all these things. And they look at it. They should look at the church and be like, why are they not fighting? Why are they at peace? Why are they not just at, not fighting, not, not just at peace, but they have joy. When, I, when, I, when everything is falling apart, they have joy, they have peace, they have harmony, they have unity. The world is fighting about all these religious things. The world is fighting about all these political things. The world is fighting about all these racial things. The world is always fighting and bickering like children. But they, they being the actual church, they have peace. They have joy. They have unity. I want that. That's what draws people to Christ. And that is when we as the church are yielded to the Father. Amen? Because every time I bring up my issues with certain people or the issues with the world or the devil or my conflicts and I bring that to the Father, he burns it up in his presence. In other words, convinces me as it doesn't matter. <laughs> He's like, Jeremy, it doesn't matter. In the end, we're all for, you're all forgiven. In the end, you're all washed in my blood. And I'm just like, it doesn't matter. But when you're in the pride and you're not walking with him, when you're in it, you feel like this is all that matters, which is idolatry. And it's like a speck of sand in an ocean of sand. That those problems that we that they do we strain at a net, right? We strain, ooh, you're this thing, if this little thing was fixed. <laughs> and and the devil's like yes they fell for it <laughs> right then he sees people like walking in the spirit like you and i and he's like no they're creating unity and love and harmony no i gotta stop them i gotta get them to focus on the net that they can't even control <laughs> You can't control people. You can't control what's going to happen. You can't control any of it. That's like trying to Jedi mind force the ocean. 
No problem, gents, I got this. I'll calm the seas because I am Jesus, <laughs> right? And that we feel like in our Christian pride that we can fix the world. Jesus already did it 2,000 years ago. He's looking for people who they believe it. Do you believe it? Let me th use this last illustration. Noah was sipping his tea, playing with his kids on the boat, right? Shoveling poop like nothing happened. Everybody outside of the boat was drowning. In their pride. In their anger, in their covetousness, in their rebellion. We gotta fix this world. And Jesus is like, it's already finished. I already fixed it. <laughs> right? Drinking his tea. When are you gonna believe it? If anyone should have fixed the world, it was God. Amen. That's why he said it's finished. But who, who's going to believe that and walk in that spirit and walk in that truth or be swept away and drowned, right? I don't know about you, but I'm going to have me some barbecue, right? I'm going to enjoy me some nice pool party stuff. And why those most people are going to sit there in the water, drowning themselves in politics, drowning themselves in their religion, trying to prove their point. I'm just going to be like, you want to come out? You want to get some oxygen? Have some barbecue with us? No, you just want to drown in your arrogance? <laughs> All right, we'll be praying for you. <laughs> praying that, you know, you learn to forgive, you learn to repent. You're not God. <laughs> That's what it is. And the, the devil deceives us. He doesn't have to get us necessarily to believe his lie. He has to get us to create our own to believe in it. That way, hear me out? We hold on to it. Because we created it. Because if someone created the lie, you could just discard it, right? It's easy. Watch the movie Inception. <laughs> But if you created a lie, then you're drowned in it. Unless you humble yourself and go, I can't do this anymore. And you come up for oxygen. <gasps> the joy and peace returns. That's all I got for you guys. <laughs> the trap. Don't fight. Don't argue. Walk in the spirit of God and you'll walk in the... I love how Jesus, while everyone's fighting. You ever notice... When chaos erupted, right? Particularly at Jesus, it scripture says that he walked in the midst of them. It's funny. I gotta use this. I gotta do this one more. I disagree with that. Me too. Let's fight. And Jesus is like, I'm out of here. <laughs> like turkeys, they're just gobbling each other up. And Jesus is like, peace out. <laughs> We need to do, we need to be walking in the spirit. He'll get you to avoid all that conflict, right? Just, I'm out of here, scooting out of here, get, get out of here. <laughs> we don't cause disruption. The flesh, the world, the devil does that. Amen. Hopefully when we step into those environments with those conflicting situations, that peace comes, peace. I love how the Father always says that through an angel or through Jesus or disciple, well, particularly Jesus or the angels. Peace be with you. The first thing that shows up on the scene, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace, like, like aliens, right? We come in peace, like, you know, like we come in peace. That's what should be us as Christians, those in the spirit. We come in peace, 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 <laughs> right? They start doing that, peace, 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 peace. I love it. One more, one more. In the movie, The Risen, or Risen, it's about Jesus, the Roman guards who crucified Jesus, and then they come to find that he's alive. This particular Roman opens the door. He sees the disciples. He's like, I got you guys. And then he looks back, and he sees the dude he killed named Jesus. And he's like, and he takes a step back, and he's like, 
what did I just see? And then he slowly opens the room and he looks at him again and Jesus smiles at him and he says to the Roman, there are no enemies here. Powerful. That's a Holy Spirit made movie. You got to check it out. It's amazing. But that's the truth. In the spirit of God, in Christ, walking with God, there are no enemies. All the enemies have de been defeated on that cross. Our sin, the devil, and death. Amen? Let's pray. Father, bless this word as you already have. Help us walk in the spirit of truth. Help us walk after you. Help us not be deceived by the devil in his legalism called the law of accusations and revenge. Help us walk in peace and harmony in forgive, turning the cheek, forgiving, repenting, praying that the yoke of people are broken and they can walk in this grace and truth and mercy because in the end, there are people who've been forgiven and there are people who haven't. Help us walk in the forgiveness and that truth so we can, you can use us as vessels to show the world who you really are in grace and truth and mercy, that mercy triumphs over the law. In Jesus' name, amen, and God bless.